I just picked up this beautiful 1976 Arctic Cat Pantera 5000. It's really a 5000. I wonder if I had family in the marketing department. Anyway, it appears to be in excellent, excellent condition and very well kept. But the last time it was registered for use was 1999 or 22 years ago. So today I'm just going to get her fired up and we're going to go bang some ditches. That doesn't sound right, but it's too late now. Derek's Buying Junk Tip 2316, subsection D. Hook your peepers in around you. Just give her a scan. Where are you at? What are you doing? Where are you at? If there's junk everywhere, stacked up, in heaps, you're tripping on it. The feller can't find the thing to the stuff. You're in for a doozy. Now, there are some exceptions to that rule, so don't get angry at me there, guy. But... What I'm getting at is, when I went to pick this sled up, you walk into this feller's barn, it was tidy. Everything had a place, it was clean, it was organized, it was well swept. The guy cares about stuff. This sled here was up on, what are they called? Pallets, wood thing in a cube. Had a tarp on it, covered up, and it's got 914 dryer sheets in it for some reason, and mothballs. So, I mean, he cared about the machine. He actually had one just like it with the factory windshield, and I think it had some saddlebags on her. And I turned it down. I just didn't have the change at the time. So we ended up with this one here, and I think we have a really good shot just based on how this thing is looking. I'll pop the hood on this baby, and let's take a gander at it. So before I get in the power barn and get that up, we'll kind of just walk around this old gal and talk about the Pantera model. Articat was kind of like Mopar. They had 87 made up models. Most of them didn't mean much other than different stickers. Articat's kind of the same thing. The Pantera was known as kind of a powerful cruiser. So it's supposed to be comfortable on the trails and the ditches, but it shared the same engine as the El Tigre, which was actually factually the fastest snowmobile for several different years. And that should be a forced air Suzuki two carburetor engine in there and we'll figure out here in a minute. But this one had some pretty cool options. You had the nice wood grain, nice gauge set up in here. This one's got 2,112 miles, which is fairly low for a 70s machine. Some you get 6,000, even up into 8,000, but then you don't know if the engine's original or not. By looking at this already, I think this is completely original. I've kind of already once over the thing. All the way down to the flap. Has the original Articat flap on it. But being this was a cruiser, had a nice little trunk area. And he had an extra little fuel tank back here just in case. Empty. More dryer sheets. Sparkulator. Heavily used. That doesn't look too good actually. Nothing else. Guy can get his brandy in there. These had hitch options and other things like that. And the other thing is, they were heavier than the El Tigre, but they're really not that heavy. I mean, a guy can throw these around pretty easily. Brake moves, throttle moves, lightning, no lightning, get a headlight on, pretty basic stuff. This one is pull start only. So you just had run and off. Choke isn't stuck. Being stored indoors is huge. I'm not gonna pull the rope, you'll see why in a minute. I got dryer sheets everywhere. Fiberglass is in great shape. I don't think this thing's been used or abused hardly at all. Not even a poker run. Bumper isn't caved in, so it hasn't rear-ended somebody at 48 miles an hour. Skis aren't toe in or toe out. That's pretty amazing. And this is that plush ride. Guy gets a shock later up here on the old spring. Now we got luxury going on. Most of the Articats 
this gets broken, chipped off, and that's from guys just being careless and slamming the hood down. So that's one of the very first things I look at. I mean, this thing's really been taken care of. Hasn't been twisted up. This is a snow stuff windscreen. That's aftermarkets. The originals, of course, are up here for some reason. Straps are busted off. That's no big deal. I think I got some actually. That's pretty well fogged up. Tunnel's in good shape. You want to look for wrinkles right here. That's from hitting culverts. This is a little bit kitty wampus, so I'm going to take a look at that closer. But it's not bent. I'm not seeing any huge wrinkles in there, nor on the other side. And then the confirmed age on these Arctic kitties, there's this tunnel tag in all of them. Well, it should be there. This one is 6 of 76, and this is when they were making them in Thief River Falls, Minnesota. And then here's that tag, December of 99. Now that doesn't mean that was the last time that it ran. I have no idea or no way of telling, but I don't know why it would be a good running machine and you wouldn't license it up and go scoot it around, I guess, but hard to say. But yeah, overall, I think I got a pretty good deal on it. I am gonna probably eventually polish the tunnel up, get the seat recovered and stuff like that, but. Let's get the power barn open, see what we got going under there, and then we'll roll it on its side and take a look at the skis and the track and everything else. Got her propped up here. Got some life left in these rods, so this should be fine. The Hyfax skitters and sliders. Track mabobbers. These look great. In fact, they must have been replaced right before it was put up. They're faded, but I mean, they're in really good shape still. So that's nice. Tracks cleated. It does have some dry rotting in it, but it's an old school. See that Articat, that A? That's really cool. Bogies look fine, no excessive wobble. The springs aren't busted. Sometimes you'll find that these are snap. Shock is it blown out or bent. So I mean, overall, it's rideable. We'll need a track pretty soon. That dry rotting, it's gonna start ripping and coming apart. But it's it's a good going to town in the ditch unit for sure. So this is the Suzuki. This would be a 500 dual carb. Look how clean this thing is. It's very rare that you see a machine this clean in the belly. Everything is here, spare belt. These are the temperature sending units. So these go under the spark later. And you got left and right head, and that would be this gauge up here. But there's these old crumbly dryer sheets. They're just, they're everywhere on the sled. In fact, I think they're even in, yeah, here they are. Oh, some seeds fall. Might have to clean that out. But even in the exhaust, this guy put them everywhere. So he clearly cared about the machine, didn't want anything to happen to it. But I mean, everything looks to be complete. Hasn't been hacked up. Factory pipes on it. All the wiring looks to be in good condition. Throttles move freely. There's no clamps on any of the fuel lines. So, well, I guess there is on that one. But these back here looks like an aftermarket on off. And filters way down here. And that looks pretty good, although these hoses, of course, rock hard. I mean, they've been replaced, but years and years and years ago, I would say. A little bit of oil down here, but again, it's this is one of the cleanest 70s sleds I've seen under here. It's really been taken care of. Some fix in here. Of course, these have been fixed on. Guy doesn't want his lights coming out, so she's been night driven. That's a good hint there. Let me pull this out. I think we got it clear now. Sounds like great compression. 
Let me pull the gas cap, see what we got. This says it's empty, but... Ooh. <laughs> it's not, it's not good. It is, I mean, there's just a little tiny bit in there, but not a ton. Plastic tank, that's really nice, saves a ton of work. I'm not even thinking I'm gonna flush that, being it's plastic. I don't see any evidence of it being cracked or leaking. So I think I'm just gonna take the air box off, take the carburetors off, let's pop the bowls off, clean them up a little bit, and just make sure that the needle, seat, float look okay. And then I think it's as easy as find some sparkulators, throw some fuel on this thing, and let's just start pulling the rope and see what happens. Everywhere I look, I'm finding these dryer sheets. Maybe it does work. I don't know. Do you guys use dryer sheets or mothballs or what have you? I've used dryer sheets before, but I can't really say that they worked, but maybe they do. I don't know. You guys can put it down in the comments. If you've got anything to keep mice away, I'd sure like to know. I'm having a heck of a time. Nothing in here. Oh, there is a baffle in here. And that must have kept the mice from getting all the way in. There were some seeds that came out of here when I pulled that one sheet out. Take, take the boots off the back of the fuel making happeners. And this air box should be able to come out of here. I don't know which direction it comes out, but we'll figure it out. This way? Maybe. There we go. Oh, lots of silicone around the inlets here. Man, this thing is clean. Again, that was a fuel inlet hose and no clamps. Just easily slid off. That's, I don't know if he was in the middle of changing out filters or changing out hoses. These are obviously different, but I'm going to have to put some clamps on those. That doesn't make sense to me. Wow, how long are these? Wow, really clean. Really clean. We might not have much work to do today, which is nice. I'm ready to just go ride. Same story. Of course, they smell like varnish oil, but they are very clean. So these have been siliconed up. I don't know if this was cracked off or if it was just leaking. Not that it's doing a ton. I'm not quite sure what. Oh yeah, they're cracked. So I'm gonna have to redo that, I guess. And look how clean it is in here. That's pretty crazy. But yeah, these didn't have any clamps on it. Easily pulled right off. These are exceptionally clean. So take these clamps off. And I don't know if I wanna pull these choke cables out. So I might just swing them over here, get some paper towels down, snip off the old bowl of the carburetor. Hopefully I can get it off without breaking that gasket because then we're up a crick without a paddle. I wanted to knock this out quick so I could start drying. I did the same exact thing, but I used the black Permatex. I think there must have been that clear window silicon on there and gas and oil will eat that up. This will withhold a little bit better. Skedios. Got this side off, flipped the belt guard up, got the speedo cable out of the way. Then I can actually get to the screw there. Being really gentle here, I don't want to break these boots. They're fairly soft yet, which is great. Uh-huh. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. This would be the right one as you're riding it. Crack this open. See what we got in here. I'm going to guess that this guy probably cleaned everything before he stuck these in storage just by looking at this sled. Gentle, gentle. Derek, be gentle. Gentler. Oh, I didn't break it. Floats are moving. That's great. Needle stuck. Very typical. 
Um, I'm going to get something to press this pin out and then I can work this needle free with just some carb cleaner. Don't pull them out with pliers to score them up, but shoot some juice in there. She'll loosen up and then we'll see if we got to emery cloth it or just be really delicate and shine it up a little bit so it doesn't stick anymore. I'm in a predicament here on this fuel make it happener and I wanted to show you guys this in case you run across it. In order to remove the needle and seat, this little pin right here has to come out that goes across there and holds this. This one's been flattened or tampered on this side and it's not impossible, but getting this pin out is uh, quite a bit of work and pretty touchy. If you get too rambunctious, I don't know the technical term, but this tower or these stems, you can snap these. Then you're JB welding it or buying another carburetor. So I'm actually gonna leave this alone. And even though that needle is stuck, I'm just gonna set it up like this. And then I'm gonna take some juice and just try to work it free this way while it's in there. And as you can see, that's not in my favor yet. There she goes. Now she's starting to work free. Put it over here now. There. So I'll keep working on that and make sure that this is going to be moving freely. So that's now resolved that. I'll run some more through there just to make sure it's not going to stick again. Otherwise, these carbs look like they're in very good shape. One of these floats was sticking like that. There it comes. I'll shoot some juice in here too, lubricate these up. But these have definitely been cleaned before it was stored. This is the left carb now. Whew, didn't break the gasket. There is some dirt in this one. Yeah, another stuck needle. Same story here. I'm just gonna clean her out just like this and hope that uh, I can break her free. There she goes. Those are back in, throttle caps are back on. These McCunies are really good carbs actually. It takes a lot to fumble them up. I think before I put the fuel lines back on, I'm gonna try to prime on it a little bit. And basically I can dump some fuel in here and I'm gonna blow some air in there and see if I can at least fill these lines down to this part here so that I'm not cranking on it forever to get these bowls filled back up. And if that doesn't work, then I can put a line on a one gallon jug and there's that little breather nipple. And I could pop that onto the carb here. Just flip the gas can upside down and that'll fill the bowls up for you so you have fuel quicker that way as well. So I'll find some gas and I'm just gonna mix it to 50 to one and put that stuff in there. And I think I have a cap for that too, we'll see. Yeah, so this here is around 50 to one. The sled, calls for 20 to 1 originally back in 76 but keep in mind that oil has changed so much and so has gas that I'd start at 40 or 50 to 1 right around there read your plug see how it's performing and make adjustments from that point so I got the old nozzleator 3000 XL over here and I'm gonna put my hand around this and then give her some air and I'll set you guys up and hopefully you can see the filter Filling with fuel and we get all this here primed up. There we go. And then I'll switch this back to off. Well, we got the fuel system all figured out. Carburetors cleaned up. Got the lines primed. Let's see if we got some lightning and then we'll go to just throwing out the old back. Looking forward to it. Nope. Grab some NGKs here. Stuck one in, just gonna lay it across the head. And basically we're looking for lightning anywhere in this region. And we're gonna call that good. Make sure the key's on, kill switch isn't on. Here's hoping, I definitely don't have another coil. Oh, a little bit. Well, 
Well, she ain't nothing to run to town and have a beer about, but I think we got some lightning. In fact, I saw lightning out of the left side better with the plug off. It arced across to the head. So I think screw those sparkulators in, hook up the fuel lines, and I'm going to put some clamps on that. And then we just, let's see if it starts, huh? Here we go. Place your bets. It's definitely going to run. It's just how much work is it going to take to get it running. I'm going to go with choke. See what happens. This thing runs amazing. Wow. Two poles. I didn't even get the L, bring the thunder. That's just wild. I think I've got myself a really good running machine here. I'm gonna wait about another half hour. I'll get the air box back on and everything else and then I'll fire it up again for you guys and let you guys hear it run a little bit more. In the meantime, I'll check the oil here. Look over a couple other things. Brake pads look fine. Just make sure she's ready to go out and hit the ditch. Because, you know, I'm going to do the right thing. And I'm just planning on going several miles from the shop since I know nothing about the sled and the reliability of it. Because I found some finger drifts. They look pretty good. So, you got to get in them. I got updates. Scooted it around the shop, I don't know, three, four times till my face fell off. Got her up to temp, did the old, will it shut down? It did. And then will she fire back up? It did. I even got tail lips and a headlamp. I mean, it's ready to go to town. I trust it. So I'm gonna get the overalls on, throw a brain bucket on, and jam it in the ditch. I got, I don't know, eight, nine, 10 miles, something like that. Just drove by there in my pickup this morning. It's about as deep as snow we're gonna get around here. Got some finger drifts. I just like smashing into them. So I'll take you guys with me and hopefully I don't gotta walk on home. I do have a name for it already, Daryl, after Daryl Abbott, formerly a Pantera. And I think it suits it well. It's got a vulgar display of horsepower. I'll tell you that much.
This sled is a ripper, and I ain't kidding you. I don't know how or why, but it runs really good. I'm gonna get another half hour, 45 minutes of riding in. Basel, just keep scooting that way. If you guys wanna see more sled content, post down below, please. I take a look at those often. Thanks guys for watching. We'll see you next time.